Hey everyone, it's your girl Leah. And it's Ryan, Hera. Yep. <laughs> and this is Only With One Take Alia, where we sit down, relax, and talk about some things discussed only with One Take Alia. Hey man, shout out One Take Alia, man. <laughs> you know what the vibe is. Let's go, girl! Ryan, to start out, I'm going to ask you a few questions, and you're going to tell me which one of the options resonates more with you, okay? Okay. So we got palm trees or city buildings? Palm trees. Palm trees? Sunshine or the city life? Uh, I like the city life. Okay, and last one, Cascade the skating rink or access to beaches like any day? Uh, I'm going to go with Cascade. Cascade. <laughs> All right, well, from these questions, it's looking like you more in tune with Georgia compared to Florida. Oh, for sure. For sure? Yeah, I'm Atlanta. Uh, All right, so for those who don't know, Ryan, you were born where? In Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Yeah. So the debate of where Ryan Harrow is from is a big one within the family. So let's yeah. just put it out there now. Where is Ryan Harrow from? I'm from Atlanta, but I was born in um, Fort Lauderdale. And I might have told you I was from New York when I was younger, but <laughs> no, I'm from Atlanta. All right, sure. well, so we're going to stick with Atlanta. Yeah. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and go back to high school. Yeah. You were at Cannon School in Charlotte for a little bit, but ended up coming back to Walton here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your senior year, you were named Gatorade Georgia Player of the Year yeah. and Mr. Cobb County. Yeah. So if you could look back, tell me how those accomplishments made you feel back then. Back then, for sure, I was happy to be acknowledged because it was some really good players mm -hmm. um, that I was playing against that year. Uh, Jalon Kendrick, um, he went to Memphis. He was a McDonald's All-American. Trey Golden went to Tennessee. Um, Jordan McCray went to Tennessee. It was a lot of boys. Uh, Jeremy Lamb went to Connecticut. It mm -hmm. was a lot of folks. Uh, I just happened to play well that year and got acknowledged, and I, I definitely was happy and yeah. I appreciate it for that for sure. So you think like all the hard work throughout your four years in high school is that when it finally paid off? You feel like? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, you know, uh, I didn't make McDonald's on American or Jordan. So like that, that was the highlight of my senior year for sure. Being Gatorade player of the year for the state. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into college. You started at NC State. Yeah. Um, ended up going to Kentucky after that mm -hmm. and then ended up finishing at Georgia State. Yes. And while at Georgia State, you accomplished some big things. Y'all were Sun Belt Conference champions mm -hmm. and you got named all Sun Belt first team. Yeah. So some would even say still that you are one of the best players to come through the program. So would you say that's an accurate uh, I statement? De I definitely think I'm one of the best players to come through Georgia State. Um, not that I, you know, saw the older players. Um, I try to keep up with some, the newer players, and they definitely had some good talent come uh, since I've left, but. I just think I brought something different to the school when I came that year and what our team did that year. Those two years I was there, I think it was just a different atmosphere for everybody. Right. And so what what did you bring as Ryan Harrell? You know, other people saw you at the other two schools. Yeah. So they had expectations. But what do you think you really brought to the program? Um, excitement. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm from Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. I'm from Lithia Springs, but I say I'm from Atlanta, you know, uh, but I'm like, I'm from the city. That's what I tell anybody from outside the city. And so me coming back to the city and people seeing me play in high school, uh -huh. um, knowing what I did in high school, the excitement was already building up once right. I um, got to the campus. And then once they saw us play, if, mm -hmm. um, we just went on a run. So after Georgia State, you ended up playing overseas for about six years, right? Uh, seven. seven, six, seven. Uh, yeah, yeah. Around there? Mm hmm And you were over there for a minute, so yeah. looking back, could you tell me, like, just take me through those six, seven years, like, what were the ups and downs? Um, overseas is crazy, you mm -hmm. uh, know. It's a different experience for everybody because there's different levels for everybody. Um... I've always played in the top divisions in all the countries that I've went to, but it's not always been the top teams right. in that country. So uh, I've dealt with crazy living experiences. I've dealt with 
crazy coaches, crazy gyms, mm -hmm. all, all of that stuff. But the experience just to go see a different country and go right. play basketball and still get paid to do what you love. And uh, I have my family with me, so they got to experience it with me. Um, that That's something that nobody could ever take away from me. So that, that was really cool. And did you have a favorite country that you played in? Um, I really liked Greece. Greece was nice. Yeah. Um, very nice because I stayed in Athens, so oh, okay. I was right there. Yeah. Uh, I liked Poland a lot because it was cheap. Um, yeah. You could get the designer clothes and stuff for cheap, so I liked that a lot. Uh, Italy was cool, but I, I had to say Greece was like the, the nicest. The top one? Yeah. So you're back here in Georgia now, and you're done playing basketball. Yeah. Um, Tell me how you feel about that first. Uh, I'm cool with it, you know, yeah. I love the game and uh, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now, yeah. uh, you know, training the kids, so I'm st sticking around the game, but like I said, I, I do have a family and a little girl, mm -hmm. um, and she's ready to start her life here. Right. Uh, and my body was just getting tired, you know, getting uh, yeah, getting <laughs> tired. And, uh, I wanted to still be able to move around and interact and do things, you know, mm -hmm. as I'm getting older and see my little daughter grow up and stuff like that. So I'm cool with it because, yeah. you know, I've transitioned into yeah. this training thing and not thing, this training business right. and uh, it's working out for me and it, it can only get better. Right. So if you could come up with any advice to give like another player who's having to step out of their sport just for and to experience other things, what would the advice be? Uh, I would say just do whatever is going to make you happy. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of things that you may do that doesn't make you happy, but you may still have to do it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if you're not happy doing the things that you're doing, then I wouldn't waste my time yeah. with it. Yeah, do what, you, do what you love. Yeah, for sure. Um, so like you mentioned, you started your own training business. Um, shout out Rare Training. Yeah, um, yeah. So how is that going? Uh, it's going well. Uh, I, I just started maybe like a month and a half ago, two months ago, and uh, I got a lot of people that's mm -hmm. wanting me to train their kids and range her from little kids all the way to college kids. Uh, and it's cool because, I, like I said, I get to stay in the gym. Mm -hmm. I, I work out with them, so I stay in shape, yeah. and they get to see how I, how I do things, right. and they they like how, how I present the game to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm enjoying it a lot, and I hope that, that it continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. So there's a lot of trainers, though, you know, all around. So what's going to, moving forward, what's going to help you stay separate from the rest of them and have you stick out? Um, I would hope that it's they seeing the kids that I train, and mm -hmm. um, they see that, oh, they've gotten better over the time that they've trained with me. But I know for a fact that, I'm gonna keep getting kids just yeah. because of the Ryan Harrow stigma. Right. You know, a lot of the kids now they can shoot the ball because they see Steph Curry shooting mm -hmm. it, so it only makes sense. But a lot of them are dribbling and doing the things that you know I was doing. So if they could put both of those together, mm -hmm. then who knows what yeah, we'll see right. in a few years? Yeah, and it'll be thanks to you. You got some part in that. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, before we end. For those who don't know, Ryan Harrow is my uncle, so this is a nice little yeah, family yeah. affair. Um, <laughs> growing up, I watched him play basketball. At a lot of games. Yeah, not so much that I can remember in high school, but for sure college and everything. So it's just cool to, to be here now, you know, I'm doing stuff within the sport. He's still, you know, a big name in the sport. So yeah. thanks for joining me no here on Only With One Take Aaliyah, and that is all I got for you. See you. Keep watching. Yep. <laughs> Bye.